one. Okay guys, we took a drive up from Cezela, stopped, spot, spot. Um, nothing really happening. I know they're netting at uh, Mazamtoti right now, but um, no sharks or fish with them. So we're just gonna drone a bait out here at Happy Wanderers and see if we can lure in one of those big bullies uh, that's up for a tussle and dare to take on the LD60 dogfight. So let's go see. Okay guys, we're here at uh, Happy Wanderers. There's uh, some guys here, Neville Barnard here. Um, and some other guys have been getting bronzes this morning. Bronze whalers, up to 150. So there have been some sharks around. Uh, at about 400 plus meters, so we'll just see. Try our best. I can't fly that far. Um, but I'm going to use the drone and see if I can fly that far with the drone. And I think there's quite a bit of a surge, sinker-wise. We'll see how that pans out. Um, just running you guys through quickly for drone fishing. My preferred setup, Dogfight LD60. This has got about a thousand meters of line on. Now I'll explain quickly. I've put 65 pound backing uh, gator braid. Then on top of that, 600 meters, then on top of that is 400 meters, or 350, 400, 65 pound J braid. That bait breaks over 80 pound. J braid is very underrated on the packaging. And then I put 0.75 maxima top shot, 50 meters. And I'm gonna tie a 1.8 mil tapered leader onto this, a nine meter. And then I'm also gonna fish about a meter steel to my ring. On that meter of steel, I'll show you guys, I bend the, the knot, I don't clip it off the tag, I bend it up so that the non-return can't go past that fishing a shark safe uh, trace. Let's get that going. Type of leaders, and it runs from 0.95 to 1.8 mil tapered. There's five liters on a spool like this. You can go straight to two mil. Fathom, the fathom uh, leader material. If you don't want to taper. I know there's a lot of guys that uh, insist on the two mil. Okay, now on that I'm just going to use an improved ball bright. Remember with the improved Albright you leave your tags till last. I like pushing this knot up a bit with my finger. Until it pulls nice, nice and tight, you can see that. Then you grab your tag. A nice small knot, neat knot. Considering I'm using 0.75 to 0.95. you can tie straight to your ring or we'll try something I don't know if the knot will be satisfactory but I'm gonna try it it's tying that to uh, just over a meter 200 pound see if this knot I'm happy with it now This one, I'll assist. Pushing it up. Now, this is what I referred to having that little tag in, which will prevent your non return to go up your leader if that worries you on uh, droning this bait out. Now, guys, this is the new Saltus drone, the 12 foot 6. 
this is a prototype some of the cosmetics will still change it's fitted with the proper wind grips you'll see the new ones coming through it's got the Daiwa logo on the decal it's beautiful and then a couple of minor changes along the road proper real seat so you can handle the 80 80 pounds and bigger reels if you want to towards the end of the year we'll see them on the market I'm quite excited about them I think you can see there's, a, there's quite a big drag in the water here side wash so we'll have to fish two sinkers because I've only got eight arms here and I'll cable tie them as well but when we talk about cable tying a sinker we'll bend them open and it's so that they don't clip open with a drag Looping my sinker on. Like so. And then I add another loop. That's for my second sinker. So basically that will be my sinker setup. Sitting like that. What we refer to as the shark safe trace. This 250 pound, you can go heavy, you can get 400 pound. It's up to you. I'm quite happy with uh, fishing 250. Even the rod and reel, this is a nice comfortable setup to fight a big fish. You still want to be in touch of actually fighting the fish, not just drag. And I'll use my drop loop to my drone. About five meters up the leader, six meters up the leader. Now what happens with this Okay, say your line breaks anywhere from here to your reel. The sinkers will hold on to the sand, it will drag all the line through this and your fish will only swim with this piece. Okay, in this case about 1.3, 1.4 meters. And it will only swim with a circle hook in its mouth and that piece of cable with the slide clip. It's not going to drag two, three, four hundred meters of line behind it. just over 400 meters about 410 and I used 22% battery life on the Phantom 4 Pro the Advanced Plus and uh, in theory you, you don't want to push it too far but I think you would do four baits like that on a battery just for interest sake um, I've got two batteries at this stage third battery is in for a service but uh, that gives you a good idea running at 400 meters mild wind not a very strong wind i drop it quite a bit longer you saw that about 10 meters under the drone at least that has a lot less effect on the swinging of your drone the shorter you drop from the drone the more you've got that swing effect which affects your drones flying all right so you drop it nice and long um, i'll show you guys what i use for a drop loop i use a rubber band onto it the rubber band wraps onto my leader which makes it not slide around and then I use just a tie with a 0.85 leader I tie a little ring which I put onto that rubber band and that fits nicely into the gannet it locks it up and uh, easy drop loop so it stays on my on my leader if it has to get hooked up anywhere in the ocean that rubber band will just snap off okay which I prefer I don't like the, the the other drop loops the guys tie on their leaders because somewhere along the line it might just snag on something so as little possible snags we, we try and prevent any snagging up whatsoever so the rubber band works really nice but the main main um, goal of that rubber band is you've still got that with it swinging it it doesn't have as much impact and effect on your drone as without a rubber band 
So just a little couple of things that works for me. You can use it. I don't drone a lot of baits to be honest, but uh, in the last couple of days, I really felt uh, I wanted to test this new rod with the LD60, spooled up exactly like we fish it, and uh, just see what we can hook in the sardine run now. There's been no sharks close up. What's nice is this is supposed to be a reel you can cast as well. The guys say they're batting with it. Um, I don't know, I'll take it on, I'll try it, uh, to cast on it. Say the sardines are in the bay, yeah. I'll try and lob this rod in any case. The rod will cast perfect, the reel something you need to get used to, lever drag. But you can take an 8 ounce sinker, two swords, and lob it at least 50 to 80 meters far. Which is far enough for, the, for a shark to pick it up if the swords are in the bay, yeah. Uh, other than that, it doubles up nicely for a drone setup. And uh, the right rod, right reel, right braid, right trace, everything set, right distance. Let's hope there's still some action, maybe we were too late. Got caught up at the office, as it always happens. So we, uh, we got here about two and a half hours late, uh, where they've already landed three sharks here by Happy Wanderers. I've got a stripy head, which uh, has been a month in my freezer, I've got a couple of them. And uh, I just took one of those out, which is very nice, bloody bait, a lot of smell. So I'm almost certain we're going to get some action. Some big bully is going to pick a fight um, due to his appetite. And that's the main reason. No swords in this area, however, there's a couple of birds circling. And here and there you see them taking a dive. But nothing major here. All the action's up at uh, Mansum Toti. They're trying to need some sides here. I don't know if they've been successful at that. Um, but there's no sharks or game fish with them or reported with them yet. So we're going to give it a shot here yesterday. Uh, further south at uh, Pennington Ski Boat Club. Also this morning they got some pools. And then further down the also Zela area. There were quite a few sharks around. Uh, so let's hope there's still one swimming around. Your nice big fat one. I don't want to undergun this reel and rod. So we're hoping for a nice big grey shark. Okay, Neville Barnard, no introduction if you're on the carp side and even on the saltwater side, all the big sharks there in Mazeppa and Transkai. Um, Neville used to be on our ambassador team a couple of years ago. And uh, still going strong, I see. Still going strong, fast with the big fish. Aren't you supposed to work? <laughs> <laughs> <What's work? laughs> oh, that's work. That's nice, it's almost out. Yeah, it's Someone gonna grab it? Just this lip is killing us. Tired? Okay. Yeah. It's been bronzies around this morning. It could be one of those bronzies. I'm gonna nurse it, so it might be a nurse shark. So when I get it over that back bang, it's tight sucking already. So soon with that bank, you're gonna have a hell of a suck. Let's we'll see what that does. Get him over that lip. It's about a hundred meters out now, just over a hundred. I think I might have it over that bank. So now it's just taking time here and uh, saving some energy for the lip. Sitting on 
that little bank there, there's a lip there. If it can come a bit right, we've got it. It's gonna give us trouble with that extra lip. He was messing me around there, using that current to full it on. to this rip yeah yeah she used it so well I think some fish's intelligence is just a lot better than others and they use every bit of water to their advantage see I could hardly move her as you all would know they'll move left and right left and right I think they're just looking for, for current but she's such in that rip she moved five meters that way five meters this way for probably a half an hour it took me to get her out of that rip and a bit more towards the right here where I managed to get her then to this lip and uh, finally landed her. All these deep lips are very difficult to land them. You must also, that's why we use this very, very thick leaders in any case. Even if you're sliding and casting because this lip could be quite steep and with you holding it here, that line just touches that sand. It's a bit of a shell or something in your... But yeah, I've chuffed. We got what we came for. Put the rod and reel to the test and quite happy with that. Alright, Tio is up uh, in Natal for the week. He's leaving in two days, so um, he's from a Pumalanga club with me. My club up inland, <laughs> nice. By inland, where the millies and everything is. Yeah. Um, so if this one goes now, it's your baby. That's it. We're gonna sit with it. <laughs> Hopefully, get a pull before we go back. All right, guys. So well, that wraps it up for the afternoon. We'll come early tomorrow morning. The weed has come through terribly here, yeah, so. Pity for Theo, we'll see if he makes it through tomorrow. But uh, the weed has picked up the guys next to us as well. So it just washes you all the way down to the reef there. Uh, no way to hold the bait. So even with a drone, there's elements that will allow you not to fish as well. But you do definitely have more opportunity to fish than what uh, the rock and surf allows us. Like today, straight east, horrible fishing conditions for casting. Um, I wouldn't really put a bait unless the sods are really close in and force the fish close. So having a drone really helps that on days like this you can still get a good pull and a good fight. 